much. Now, China's restrictions on the export of gallium and germanium come into effect today. They're used in smartphones, laptops, as well as in medical and defense sectors. So no surprise that both elements are on the EU and US lists of critical elements. Last year, China controlled approximately 98% of the world's gallium production. It was also the world's leading producer of germanium, accounting for about 68%. The move is seen as the response by China to Europe and the US, removing their reliance on China's chip making. Here's our Asia business correspondent, Nick Marsh. Now, you may never have heard of gallium or germanium until just now, maybe, but they're important elements, so-called critical materials, and they're needed for chips in things like mobile phones, LEDs, satellites, uh, military equipment as well. And the reason that they've been in the news is because most of it comes from China. 60% of the world's germanium and 80% of the world's gallium. And from today, it's going to be much harder for businesses to get their hands on them. So let's take a look at what impact these restrictions are going to have and more broadly, what this US-China materials war means for the rest of the world. The consensus is that this will be damaging, but not fatal for the United States. The reason China dominates the market isn't because it's the only place where gallium and germanium exist, but because it's by far the cheapest place you can get them from. You don't just dig them up from the ground. They're derived from a more complicated production process, and China has that capability. So governments and businesses will have to rely on cheaper substitutes and alternative sources. It means prices will go up. It means some products might be less effective and some production might be delayed. So this sort of poses a bit of an existential threat to Western industry because it's the gradual erosion of capability as it gravitates towards the place where, you know, the material can be sourced reasonably. But in a broader sense, this threatens the overall narrative of globalization, the idea that international markets will be able to deliver what you need, when you need it, at the price that you need. De-risking is what Western governments like to call it, being less reliant on China. But this escalating tit for tat between the world's two biggest superpowers, well, that's got people worried about so-called resource nationalism, weaponizing the materials that you hold, the technologies that you have. A lot of people think that's going to have global consequences also for the health of the planet. And that's because a lot of crucial green technologies rely on these so-called critical materials. And this isn't something that's a national problem. This is a problem that we face as a human race. And so hopefully, you know, policymakers can bring the best selves to the table, secure access to those critical materials that are really essential for the energy transition so we can start to tackle some of the challenges around decarbonisation. Interesting. Nick Marsh there outlining uh, 